Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Natoya and I'm here to help you start traveling the world and do it all on a budget. Make, re make it realistic, fun, easy for just the average girl. That's what I'm here to help you do. So in this video guys, I'm going to teach you how to pick your very first Airbnb and do it all on a budget. Now I'm not just talking about booking any old Airbnb because I'm sure you you've taken a you've booked an airbnb probably with a girl's trip in miami or wherever vancouver we've all done girls trips where we have booked an airbnb i'm talking about from the perspective of a budget traveler that's traveling long term and wants to do it all on a budget and your motivation here is mainly to save a ton of money and have like the local kind of experience so that's what this video is about that's what I'm here to share. So be sure to stay until the end of the video to get all the details on how to do that. Before we begin guys, in the description, I have a ton of information to help you start your budget traveling journey, your solo traveling journey, whatever. I've done it all. I've lived abroad. I've done a lot. So I have so many different resources in the description to help you out. And of course, you can comment in the description if you have anything that you want me to talk about or email me if you have any topics specifically that you want me to talk about. So just to give you some like back reference and let you know that I'm the girl to talk to about <laughs> booking Airbnbs on a budget, I've stayed at probably over 30, maybe even 40 Airbnbs at this point from one month to 30 days all over the United States. I went um, road tripping around the United States for, was it two months? Stayed at a ton of Airbnbs doing that. I just came back from Europe for three months and we stayed at a ton of Airbnbs. I stayed at Airbnbs from one night to 30 days. I've stayed in a caravan. I've stayed in a ton of different Airbnbs. I've had amazing experiences and I've had terrible experiences like booking Airbnb with mice, booking another Airbnb with roaches and a different one with an ant infestation. So guys, I've done, I've done it all. I've seen it all. So, and I'm here to share with you how you can just avoid those experiences and have like the awesome experiences. So let's jump right in. I'm going to have timestamps in a description so you can skip through this video and watch what you need because right now I'm going to talk about what exactly is an Airbnb and what you can expect from Airbnbs. So if you know this already, you can just look in the description below for the timestamps. So just to keep it quick, just to keep it short, an Airbnb is pretty much someone offering a space for you to rent out. That space can be a castle, a caravan, it can be an apartment, it can be a townhouse, it can be a whole house, it can be a campsite, it can be like a car, it can be anything. Like literally you can rent anything on Airbnb. But for the most of us, what we're, what we're renting is uh, an apartment or an, an entire house, or you can rent a, a room in that apartment, or you can rent a bed in a room, in a house or apartment, it doesn't matter. So of course, all properties vary. No townhouse is alike, like all townhouses are different. No apartment is alike. All the different properties on Airbnbs are all different. But generally speaking, the reason why Airbnbs stand out is because literally they offer more space, more amenities, and they're usually in like a community with the locals. So you can have that like local experience, not every single time, but most people book Airbnbs because they want to stay where a local, live where the locals live, as opposed to being in the city center at like the Hilton. That is a whole different experience than being in like some small community um, 15 minutes away from the city center. It's just a different experience. So those are the two main reasons people book Airbnbs, to have the local experience and to just get more stuff. So for example, this Airbnb I'm in right now in Kissimmee, Florida, it's literally $131 a night for a four bedroom apartment with wash, washer dryer, dishwasher, pool. Yeah, there's a pool in the backyard, backyard's that way. And there's about six beds in here. I think the master bedroom, my bedroom, and there's two bedrooms with two beds each. So there's a ton of space in this house. And again, it's $120 and $31. That's insane. At the airport hotel, me and my sister stayed at when we just arrived in the country, it was $134 for a room with two beds, no washer, no dryer. So that goes to show you really need to give Airbnbs a shot. So guys, if your number one reason to booking Airbnbs is to have that like local experience, be sure to watch my video on booking Airbnbs in Croatia, where I kind of talk about how my experience in Croatia was like 
awesome just because I was staying amongst the locals. It was just such a cool and unique experience. Um, number one awesome thing being that we got the local price and not the tourist price. So, you know, when you're, when you're near the tourist destinations, you get the tourist price. Like everything is just so much more money. But when you're away from it, you get the local price. And that was awesome to like visit bakeries and just do all that jazz. So check out that video. And another reason, I just want to throw it in there. My favorite part of booking an Airbnb, because you have a whole fridge, a stove, a place to cook and save money and store your groceries, store your food. We all know how expensive it is when staying at a hotel and you literally have to buy every single meal, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and all your snacks. You save so much money just by going grocery shopping and cooking at your Airbnb. Now, I'm not saying you have to cook every single meal, but it does help to, to cook breakfast, maybe lunch, and go out for dinner. And this channel is all about budget traveling, so it totally fits my lifestyle and my vibe. Okay guys, so we're gonna go through like a real example here. I'm booking an Airbnb as a budget traveler. So I'm trying to go to, well me and my sister, we wanna go to um, Merida, Mexico, probably for a month maybe. I'm not exactly sure what we're doing. We're still deciding, but we kinda wanna go to Merida, Merida Mexico in January. So let's go through this together. This is gonna be like a real example here of how I go about picking uh, Airbnb as a budget traveler, and you can pick up some tips too. Uh, so when you book your Airbnb, you can know exactly what to do. So let's jump right in on my computer. All right, so let's type in Merida, Mexico. We wanna go sometime in January, we're so flexible. I recommend that you guys be super flexible. Let's say the fourth, one, for four weeks, one, two, three, four, we're gonna go one, two, three, four, four weeks. It's gonna be three adults and a child. So yeah, so let's see. So we're gonna put, uh, we are gonna put entire place because it is Merida, Mexico. It's a more affordable country. Prices are much lower. So looking at the entire place is totally cool. So we are going to put that so if you're in somewhere exp super expensive like the UK, first of all, I don't even recommend you going to the UK if you're a budget traveler. If you're on a tight budget, I don't recommend that. But if you decide you have the urge to go to London, I would book a private room or even book a shared room. It, it'll, it cuts the price in like half and you still have access to the kitchen, all the amenities, the living room, all that jazz. You still have access but you're just renting a private room. So the host is there, maybe there's even a another guest there. So just think about that, but we are going to Mexico, which is super affordable. So we're gonna get the entire place. Okay, so now we put book the number of bedrooms. Obviously, if you're going by yourself or with your partner, you need one bedroom, but we are gonna need three bedrooms and at least three beds. So we, you put that in, all right. And the filters, which is like the same as your amenities. Of course, we need air conditioning, washer. Don't just assume that the property will have air conditioning, especially in Croatia and Paris. A lot of the properties did not have air conditioning. I don't know if that's a European thing. I'm still trying to figure that out. But um, just make sure you highlight um, air conditioning and heating or heating, depending on the type of year. So we're going to highlight air conditioning, wash, um, Wi-Fi. We need a washer maybe not a dryer we do need a tv just select all the things that you need so let's say show 160 is there anything else oh yeah the price no you know what for now we're not we're not gonna filter the price i just want to see what's going on here so you want to see what you're working with what the prices are like and so far it seems like i can get some pretty decent places between 1600 a month 1700 i'm pretty sure it can be cheaper yeah 1300 Ooh, this is pretty nice for 1300 that's expensive this is amazing so look at this let's see this so i clicked on this because first of all it's a super host also because it's um 4.9 4 rating i tried to book places above at least the lowest i would book it is 4.88 is the lowest i would book it but um 4.91 is pretty good um, it doesn't have as many reviews I would like, but we're gonna work with it. Uh, let's see. 
there is a monthly discount that's pretty cool if you're booking a property for a month or a week um, your host will most likely give you a weekly or monthly discount but you can just go ahead and mes message the host we're actually doing them like a little favor by booking their whole property a month that's why they give these discounts it's easier for them they're just dealing with one person per month instead of dealing with what 10 um 20 guests per month i don't even know but um yeah just go ahead and message them if you don't see that they're offering a discount i would probably just say i want to say for a month um do you have any discounts for long term uh, um, visitors or whatever even though it's not on the website just pretend like you don't see this on the website and you don't know and they'll say yes or no doesn't matter but this prop but this property here we see that they are offering a discount which is pretty cool it has netflix and um i see that immediately so let's start from the beginning so i would first things first i would look at the pictures you want to see what you're working with i have bad experiences with these couches here um, maybe i'll share that in another video but but besides my bad experience um this little couch here it's four of us so that might be a problem but you can decide you can look at the furniture and decide what's best for you um the table here is good it's four of us it looks pretty spacious Oh, there's a couch here still not enough though but then i look at the bedrooms this is the usual order they have it in they'll have like the living room then they'll have the bedrooms the bathrooms looks pretty good i make sure that it's spacious it looks clean um definitely that it's spacious because we're, we're bringing stuff you know um yeah it looks pretty good stylish so the pictures are a go um, then I would move down and then I would read a description. So when you're reading the description, you need to look out for red flags. Mainly if the host is anal and will give you a hard time, honestly. But some, some of the hosts will put like a threatening message in the description. Um, uh, already talking about if you do X, Y, and Z wrong, they're going to fine you. I don't book places like that because I already know they're going to be a problem. If they're so willing to put that right in the description when the description here is supposed to make a good first impression for guests to want to book your place if they're so willing to put it there i wouldn't book it i know they're going to be annoying already so let's read it through i'm not going to read the whole thing but um it looks fine it's still in spanish it has a smart tv it has an office so yeah i would read that through but it looks fine for now Okay, so let's continue. Um, you would double check the amenities and see what's included and not included. So you you would look through that and everything looks fine to me. Um, I just don't like when they don't have a smoke alarm but in a carbon monoxide alarm, but yeah. So the next thing is comments, um, reviews. Reviews are so important. Your decision where you're staying should be 90% based on the reviews. Like the pictures are cool. The description from the host is cool, but the reviews is what you should be making your decision on. Like the reviews are it. So number one things you need to look for when reading the reviews is cleanliness. You have to make sure you're not going somewhere gross and people will say it in the reviews. One thing I love about the Airbnb community is that the guests are pretty are pretty honest and they will get into very specific detail on what was right and what was wrong about the property so look for cleanliness look for the response of the host like like how quick does it take the host to get back to you how um how much are they are they willing to help you and of course this is important because you're obviously in a foreign country and if you're in some place uh, by yourself and you need some help like your host should be able to help you the next thing you should look at is like comments about the location is it safe oh that's so important is it safe are there things around we're gonna get more more into that in a minute but are there things around like restaurants um, grocery store is so important public just make sure you read the reviews and check out things that, like that and just get like an overall vibe of like the value like was it worth it so let's go through some comments on this property all right so i i see this comment here um the host responded quickly to our concerns and questions that i had and that's good and that was in may 2021 that was recent he definitely recommend this house to anyone staying for a short or long period of time so that gives me the overall vibe this girl thinks it's good so yeah i would go through all those comments and look for the things that i mentioned my number one thing being safety 
cleanliness and uh, make sure it's not in the middle of nowhere because I probably won't be driving. So the three bad experiences I mentioned earlier with Airbnbs, uh, the mice house, the roach house, and the ant house. <laughs> um, two of them was because I booked the Airbnb, an Airbnb with no reviews and it, and because the price was a steal, it had no reviews, I booked it. And that's that's bad, don't, don't do that. Especially if you're a solo traveler, do not book an Airbnb with no reviews. I don't care what the price is. That's the problem we had. We seen that it was super cheap and and we took the bait and we went we ended up in a terrible experience a terrible environment but the good news is because airbnb is so awesome not only did we get a full refund and that was a monthly rental so that was like a, a lot of money um not only did we get a full refund we got a 1600 dollars credit so we ended up saving a ton of money just because of that terrible experience so guys if the reviews are go you got the green light from the reviews now it's to, now it's time to make sure that the location is also a go so you would just scroll down and then you'll see a map of the area of course it won't give you the exact location but you can see like what you're working with where the property is what's around so let's take a look so it looks like this is probably in the suburbs it looks like this is the outskirts of merida so here it is. Deciding on this property will totally be up to you and what you're looking for. And also if you're driving. So it looks like it, it looks like it's in the outskirts of, of Merida. So I would have to consider if we are driving in Mexico, probably not. And it seems unclear based on the map if there's enough, if there's uh, restaurants, uh, grocery stores or all that jazz around. So I would definitely message the host to get a clear understanding of what I'm working with. Based on this location and what we want from Merida and what we want to do, I would say this property is probably a no-no because it's on, like I said, it's on the outskirts of Merida and we kind of want to be in the city, kind of, I'm, kind, I'm not exactly sure. We kind of want to be in the city, um get a real feel for merida and not really the suburbs of merida so that would be the decision you would make when booking your airbnb do you want to be right in the city center with everything going on or do you want to be on the outskirts where it's quieter with easy access to the city center all right so say for example this property was something i wanted to book the very last thing you need to do or the very last thing i would do would, would be to check out the cancellation policy. So you scroll all the way down and what you would see is that the cancellation policy is if you cancel within 48 hours, well, you need to cancel within 48 hours to get a full refund minus the service fee. So I would decide if I'm okay with that. And then of course you would see uh, the check-in time and the checkout time. So guys, this is my exact step I take to book, book an affordable Airbnb anywhere in the world. So guys, I really tried to get in depth as much as I can to help you pick an Airbnb as a budget traveler and do it safely and just have a great property. Um, I really hope I did that in this video, but be sure to comment in the description if I if you feel like I left anything out. If you have any questions, I can talk about Airbnbs like for hours because I love it so much. Thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to like this video, hit the bell notification and the subscription button so that you can be alerted every time I make a new video. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.